Hi there, Rabbi. How are you doing today? Um, I don't know. I'm kind of um, mixed feelings today, Joe. Oh, does it have anything to do with our topic of the day? Yes, I think it does. Uh, this was one topic that we didn't include in How to Be a Jew in 30 Seconds. Well, because the subject of obviously displaying your faith by wearing symbols, necklaces, T-shirts at a time when anti-Semitism seems to be growing is sort of a dicey question. Now, I can wear a cross and then nobody will say, oh, he's obviously Catholic. Even if I'm wearing a crucifix, no one's going to say I'm, they might pin it down a little bit more but you know there are all those other faiths where people wear the cross things and like basil rathbone or any of the other vampire movies all you have to do is go like this and you get a cross but judaism symbols are unique and defining if you have a star of david on your t-shirt or in your case a hanakia it says this person is jewish is there a problem is there a reluctance? How do we deal with that in public? And that's why I'm so conflicted, Joe. Growing up in Boston, people wore crosses. People would wear mug and dove at Jewish stars. People would wear the chai, a chamsa. Obviously, Jewish symbols. And no one batted an eye. And no one said to us, don't wear that in public. Or it's not a good idea to wear it in public. So I grew up at a time when, yes, there was anti-Semitism, but it wasn't supported by a political party. It wasn't promoted by hate groups. It wasn't part of the forefront. It wasn't really socially acceptable, which it is now, because there are candidates and there are politicians in office who maintain their power based on not just anti-Semitism, but anti-gay, anti-lesbian, anti-black, pick any anti. And they're using that as a rallying point. And some, some facial characteristics or skin color can't hide. Wearing a Jewish symbol, you don't have to. And so that's why I'm so conflicted, Joe, because I want to support Judaism. I don't want to let them get away with it. However, the Talmud teaches us not to put your life in danger. What do we say to the Orthodox and Hasidim and other sections of Judaism where their clothing is mandatory? Like, I will recognize someone wearing talit uh, or, or tzitzit that's that's the, the strings right stick yes i see the thread sticking out from under their shirt and stuff like that but i'll see a family walking through the grocery store and they'll have kippa on one day if i was scared uh you know if it was ancient rome i wouldn't wear this i would hide it uh because i would be crucified or thrown in the arena with the lions but now it's ourselves doing it and we don't know who the romans are and you mentioned the ultra orthodox community one of the ways they handle it is not leaving the community you're in your neighborhood and you stay there you don't find the hasidim in nebraska mississippi alabama out on the streets because it's a safety issue and they recognize that so that's one way to deal with to stay within the community. But for the rest of us who just want to wear a symbol of our faith, like any Christian would, it's scarier because we're not talking about isolating ourselves. The Talmud says you put a mezuzah on the doorpost of your house. However, if you're afraid of someone stealing the mezuzah, you put it on the inside, not the outside. If you're afraid that someone will attack your house because they see the mezuzah and think you're Jewish, you put it inside. So the Talmud recognizes that personal safety, pekuach nefesh, saving a life, takes precedence over demonstrating one's faith and one's belief. And that's an, an individual decision for each of us. I think 
it's a disgrace on society and on politicians that we can't wear Jewish symbols out in public without fear of something happening to us. And I think that's where the blame lies because of mainstreaming hate. And again, the same goes with other minorities, with Asians, with Blacks, with trans, is using individual groups to solidify your base and rally your people around hate. And that's where I put the blame. What can we do? Is there anything that we can change or affect society? Winston Churchill said to keep going during the Blitz, but this is a different situation. One is to be careful whom we vote for. Don't vote for someone based on a single issue that they're for or against abortion or they're for or against birth control or they're for or against capital. Don't base, base it on one issue. Take a look at the politician. Look at some of the films. Look at some of the video and look at their rallies. And what are they saying? And who are they catering to? And one way would be to be sure that we are voting for individuals who are not basing their campaign on hate or destroying any one's group, or taking away the rights of any one group. I think that's a good start. The next is not to promote, not to forward the any anything that would promote. You don't have to agree with certain things. That's a given, okay? However, it doesn't mean you use them for your own ends. And I think therein lies the problem that it's just too tempting because you can always get more followers by hating than you can by loving. And that's a trap that a lot of people fall into. So that would be my caveat. Let's be careful whom we vote for and then make a personal decision. It's okay not to wear Jewish symbols if you don't feel safe or if it's a safe environment, then it would be okay to wear one. Well, one thing I never am afraid of is our conversations, Rabbi. Thanks, as always, for your guidance and wisdom. And thank you, Joe, for bringing up this subject and letting us talk about this unfortunate social climate. And we saw in Nazi Germany what happened when hating Jews went unchecked. <laughs>